This is Ashley with The Panicked Foodie, and today I am going to show you how to make homemade mashed potatoes that you can freeze. To get started, you will need 5 pounds of russet potatoes, a cutting board, a peeler, a sharp knife, a colander, and something to collect the potato peels with. Begin peeling the potatoes. Your potatoes should be white with no green parts. I also like to smell mine to make sure they're still good. I like to peel my potatoes first and then rinse after. This saves you from expending energy scrubbing them with a brush. Once you are finished peeling the potato, add it to the colander. Next, we will have the potatoes. Having them helps them cook faster. I am using a small knife here because it was the only one that was clean. Feel free to use a larger knife if you want. Although, you will see that the smaller knife ends up being advantageous. This potato doesn't look so great in the center. You can use a paring knife to cut it out so that you can use the rest of the potato. Transfer the potatoes back to the colander. You can see here that they are quite dirty and will need to be rinsed. Place the colander in your sink under running water to give the potatoes a quick rinse. To cook the potatoes, you will need an 8 quart pot. Give the potatoes a final rinse before transferring them over to the pot. Then add enough water to the pot so that there is about an inch of water above the potatoes to make sure they stay completely covered during cooking. Be sure to dry off the bottom and sides of the pot before placing on the burner. Move pot to a large burner, cover, and turn heat on high to bring water to a boil. Feel free to add some salt to the water or even cloves of garlic. Once the water is boiling, I like to remove the lid and tip it at an angle. This lowers the risk of foam formation. Set a timer for 20 to 25 minutes. You want to cook the potatoes until they are easily pierced with a fork. Here, I am going to show you what the potato looks like at the 10 minute mark. You don't need to do this, this is purely for demonstration. You can see here that it's a little hard to get the fork into the potato and to remove it. Now let's check again at the 20 minute mark. You can see now that the fork goes into the potato quite easily. The potatoes are probably done at this point, but I am going to add 5 more minutes to be sure. To a large mixing bowl, add 4 tablespoons of softened cream cheese. Add the hot cooked potatoes on top. This will help to melt the cream cheese so that you can mix it all together. Next, add 4 tablespoons of butter of your choice. Then using an electric mixer that is turned off, manually mash the potatoes. If you want zero chunks and perfectly creamy mashed potatoes, you are going to want to use an actual potato masher. I don't care if there are small chunks in mine, so I am not going to do that here. Add milk of your choice. I intend on freezing my mashed potatoes for later use, so I am going to use a high fat content cow's milk. The high fat content of the butter, milk, and cream cheese will preserve the integrity of the mashed potatoes when you go to reheat them from the freezer. I like to start off with a splash of milk and then try mixing it in. You will likely need to still mix manually in the beginning. Once you add enough milk, you will be able to use the electric mixer to mix everything together. Next, we are going to add some iodized salt. I generally put in a small handful or two, just enough to taste. Sprinkle some black pepper if you like. And then I like to add some garlic powder for additional flavor. If you use garlic cloves when you boiled your potatoes, you likely won't need the garlic powder. And I'm also adding some more milk to further thin out the potatoes. Then mix everything together. You will continue the iterative process of adding milk, cream cheese, salt, pepper, and garlic powder and mixing until you reach a taste you like. I ended up using 8 ounces of cream cheese, 4 tablespoons of butter, and about 1 half to 1 cup of milk. Once the potatoes thin out, I like to transition to using a mixing spoon. And you can see here that we have some beautiful, thick mashed potatoes. Let's talk about how to freeze homemade mashed potatoes. Label a few quart size freezer bags with the date. Then I like to pack the bags with a few spoonfuls of mashed potatoes, flatten the bags down with my hands, and then seal them shut with the zipper. This removes nearly all of the air and it makes it easy to store them in the freezer. If you like my recipes and want to get more, click like and subscribe below. Thank you for watching!